the culture that we identify with, which is painting and sculptures and things like that, we call that culture. That's not culture. That, that, that's a delusionary aspect of reality. When art is done in, in, uh, in a true characteristic of an artist, one who's a master at what they're doing, and they do it because they have many lives of skills, and they're drawn back into those skills as a child, and they develop those skills so they can make a sculpture better than anybody, yeah? and they can draw better than anybody. And they can do all kinds of really neat things. And those are nice things. But if the person doesn't do it without anybody knowing who did it, then they're in trouble. Yeah. Because the, the worship of objects is a process inside of humanity. We have a tendency to be irreverent toward humanity, but worship objects. And we can worship deities in the form of forms, yeah, or temples in the forms of forms, yeah. And because they're objects, we will freaking worship them, but we can't really worship God. And those who worship God, many who worship God, are perverted, you know, and they're using this as a way to cover up their perversion, you know, because they believe everybody is perverted. And there really is no real knowing as to what is right or wrong. You know? So they just go along with all of any of perversion. Drinking, smoking, you know, uh, being aggressive, hostile, killing, torturing people to get them to confess. And religions do this shit. Yeah? And they do it because they compromise the soul. They, they put their spirituality in statues and not people and once you're dead they turn you into a statue and you worship that yeah but what we should be doing is witnessing the virtue in life that people exhibit and it's rare it's rare virtue would be okay i did i i make a sculpture and da 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 and i just like in Tonkas that we do in Tibet, we do not know the painter. They never sign it in the back. You know, never know who did it. You know, it's just done perfectly. And it's done in geometric proportion because it's sacred. And it brings out unknown sacred values. So you don't really worship it. You just meditate because it's beyond you. Beyond you. So you can't think in a material form in that way. But if you put a name on it and that person does that, that what could have been a holy process turns into an identity situation. Oh, I have, uh, you know, Sudo Rinpoche, special painting, you know, and, you know, and I'm so blessed because I have his special painting. He only painted a hundred of them, you know, and that's not how it's done. It's not how it's done, yeah? And when we get through it, you know, kind of find out we're not really interested in these things. Because a true sacred form comes down to geomancy. And if we understand the building of a stupa or the building, uh, understanding of building of a statue of Buddha, it's not a being, it's not a person. It's a geometric pattern, yeah? And it's that pattern in our unconscious state that we're getting hit by so that we could witness Buddha when Buddha appears. We would not have the veils and we're not focusing on worshiping the statue. If you're in Buddhism and you understand this, you're taught these things. This is not a statue you worship, yeah? It's one that is made in geometric proportion and that means that we are sacred not the statue. The statue just gives us an image of ourself, you know, and it helps us become virtuous because we're not seeing it as a person living out and acting in certain ways. We're seeing it as virtues made manifest in geometric proportion as an opportunity. When Buddha comes, we'll have a really big opportunity. So we want to clear our mind with all 
the possible change of virtues, yeah, and make it possible for us to receive Buddha when he comes, because Buddha he reincarnates. So those kind of statues, those kind of things are very, very good. Yeah, they don't have a negative process put into it, and less names are put on it, and it, you know it becomes a Picasso, and now we're in hell because that's going to sell for a hundred million dollars, and the value of a dollar is going to go down to where more and more people are living on the street because the value of the dollar is worth nothing. Yeah. In other words, you can work your ass off all week long and you don't make enough money to pay for your food and your rent. You do not make the $5,000 it takes in that particular day and age and that location for you to pay for your car, to pay for your food, to pay for your rent. You know, that it's not there. The value is in the art. It's in the art or in the architecture, the big building, yeah, a city, yeah, yeah. Whether it be a, a megalopolis, you know, or even if it's a town, you know, it brings something into us of nature. We get a sense that we know each other that we we live here we choose to you know there's there's a goodness in it a rightness to it but when you step into a city it becomes uh, an asshole's idea uh, like an artist who architecturally like trump builds this shit you know like the people who sell steel they sell steel and then they say build with steel let's go to war we build tanks we build rockets. We build all kinds of things with all what we need. We need war in order to use my materials. We need buildings in order to use my materials. And you, and every every area, they have to have artistic processes, statues, and they're usually demons. You know, it, you know, like gargoyles on top of buildings in New York. That's not right. Yeah, but that's the process. Yeah, and in the end, we're we're going to have to go through the trouble of tearing them down, and getting rid of all of it, you know, and replanting everything, yeah, and living way far away, and have to go into that city just to tear it down. Yeah, not because it's useful, but because it needs to go away. <laughs>